posters discouraging Hindus from selling homes to Muslims appear in Delhi. So stick with me because this story, yeah. there's more to it than it seems. Uh, I might go, I might, if I drop out, just continue with the news. Okay. Um, lately, posters have surfaced in different parts of India's uh, Brahmapuri uh, Shadara district, telling Hindus not to sell their properties to Muslims and that any property sold to them will not be registered. The message roughly translates to sell at your own risk for street residents shall not allow such sales to be registered. All future transactions will, must be between Hindus. Advocate uh, Pradeep Sharma of lane number 13, uh, Brampuri, issued these posters to be circulated. A pediatrician, Dr. Nafis Ahmed, who runs a clinic in the area, said that when the riots were happening in some parts of Northeast Delhi in 2020, the Brampuri area remained unscathed from the violence due to the efforts of the residents. He said, quote, we have never had any kind of such communal tension in this area. As such, these posters only seek to criminalize the atmosphere. Dr. Ahmed said that when the mentality of um, staying away from Muslims is rising and Hindus are starting to distance themselves from Muslims, Gaurav, uh, Gaurav Sharma, the lead of the um, Amdi party of Brampuri, condemned the actions of Pradeep Sharma and asked, who has time for such nonsense? So this, I have to say, you know, given what's happening in India, largely as a country of extreme rise of extreme anti-Muslim bigotry, when I first read this news, I was like, okay, more of the same. However, as I read more into this, I was like, okay, this is more complex than it originally seems. So let me explain. In 2020 in Delhi, there were riots that shook the city and 57 people, no, no, 53 people were killed. Two thirds of those people were Muslim. I believe the remainder were Hindu. So that's an extreme level of violence. 53 people killed in the streets in riots only a few years ago. And so a lot of that had a lot of Muslim versus Hindu violence, like specifically intercommunal violence. And since that happened, it's caused a lot of fallout. So based on a lot of different interviews that I read from people in this area, here's what happened. So some of these posters started to appear around their area. And on the poster, they proclaim to be from a lawyer whose name is Pradeep Sharma. Now, Pradeep Sharma has denied that he is the one who made these posters and posted them around. However, he does support basically the message of the poster. And the idea is, is that in the specific district or this neighborhood, that there it used to be mostly Hindu, and now it is becoming increasingly Muslim. And people were saying, don't sell to other Muslims because basically we want to maintain a Hindu community here. And also like we, it's, it's, but it's complicated though. It's not necessarily entirely out of bigotry. A lot of Hindus are leaving because they are afraid that if communal violence pops off again, that it's just dangerous. So the the fallout from the 2020 Delhi riots is basically like this is kind of an example of the communities are just like self ghettoizing because they're afraid that if something happens again, like if they're not if if they're in a more mixed neighborhood, like they could be hurt. But people from different communities in this neighborhood that were interviewed were talking about like when those riots happened like the muslim community like we made we were guarding the shops or in the area where the shops are all hindu so we made sure that those shops were not damaged and i'm very comfortable with my hindu neighbors like i used to go you know do holy as a kid even though it would make my parents mad <laughs> like so 
Armin, what do you think about this poster as kind of a, a, a symptom of this general self ghettoization? Because this poster is really like people trying to like stop that. They want Hindus to remain there. They don't want Muslims to come in. They don't want Hindus to leave. Yeah. So what do you I think just, of everything I just explained? I, I, I don't know. I just think is India becoming more and more polarized between two sects is just scary. I mean, look at the, 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 the poster has a threat to it. So the, the poster says Hindu house owners in the Brahm, Brahmapuri right, area are noticed not to sell their house to Muslims. Sell at your own risk for street residents shall not allow such sales to be registered. All future transactions must be between Hindus. Um, wow, lovely, horrible. Jesus Christ. I don't know. It's scary. I mean, I understand what you're saying about the motivation at all, but in general, it just seems like not a good place to live for anybody, both Hindus and Muslims. Just so much tension between these communities. It seems like it's going to get worse. I mean... I'm just worried that at some point this is going to get to genocide levels. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's kind of funny, though, is that the guy who is alleged to have spread these posters actually rents to Muslims. And he said himself that if his if he got a better price on his property from a Muslim co couple, he would sell to them over a Hindus. <laughs> so he doesn't seem to follow his own rules or opinions, but <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Um, okay, so I want to cover a, f a few things. Selva just gave 30 membership gifts, right? So, <laughs> wow, <laughs> Adam is saying it's raining membership, hallelujah. Okay, uh, Gossam is saying it's raining membership and none has landed on my head. <laughs> okay, um. And Adam is saying, I have lost track of the news. Full on membership. Watch now. <laughs> okay. And also, Adam is not getting any membership. So he's saying, I have a shrine for Armin in my room, damn it. <laughs> so, uh, and Muhammad is giving them hope. Like, look, everyone, we still have time to get membership. <laughs> By the way, yeah. So it's just. Sakai is saying that if you oh, want a membership, you have to enable automatic gifts or something on your account. Oh, yeah, you need to go and ex enable something on your account that allows you to get memberships. So maybe that's why you haven't received membership. You have to actually turn it on. Yeah. Um, D is saying, this news is so alien to me living in Northeastern U.S. There are like five ethnicities on my little dead end street. Yeah. It's so true. This is something I think about after I've traveled to countries that are like monoracial it really made me realize like a slap in the face, how much I take for granted, like how freaking wonderful it is to live in a multiracial society. Like it is, and after having that experience of like seeing what it's like when you live, what a monoracial society is like, it made me like value it so deeply. I think it's so awesome to live amongst like other people like, imagine being xenophobic. Like, imagine being xenophobic. What? Yeah. Like, other cultures of, are so cool. <laughs> a lot of Americans and Canadians and Europeans don't know that, like, it's, it's great that they're so accepting of the people. Or, like, oh, we need to be accepting of other people. and But they don't know that the people back where these a lot of these people come from, they don't have the same attitude. You know what I mean? Like, it's you are better places because of having these attitudes, but the, but in the same places where these um, these countries, where the people that you're accepting are come from, they are actually the attitudes of being, um, you know, xenophobic. And it's not just like, you know, third world countries, like, I don't know, India and Iran, or, um, you know, it's also first world countries, like Japan also has that attitude, unfortunately, that is not welcoming to other people. Um, yeah, anyways, can we, when you go to a monoracial society and you're not that ethnicity, it's such a wild experience. 
Yeah. <laughs> People are like, <laughs> I swear to God, I used to, I would see people like casually taking photos of me like this. I'd be yeah, walking yeah, around yeah. just like doing normal things at the mall. And then I'd look and there'd be someone like doing one of these. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what the hell? Like, <laughs> by the way, your phone, the back of your phone says Zen. Oh, well, look at well, it says Zen Zen Digi Azadi, but what I have is a Polaroid of you, me, and Babak. Oh, AR heart. That's cool. <laughs> How cute is that? It makes That's me happy. Cute. Anyways, yeah. Get my best selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.